Oh, hello! More reviews, this time in the form of a recommendation. Now, a little while ago, one of my favourite five inch quads, which came from Lyft RC, had a failure in its flight controller. It was doing multiple beeps, which means the accelerometer and the gyro was bust. Someone, and if I was less lazy, I would have thought to have checked who that was on the comments, suggested an omnibus, and I really like to take on board um, when people have actually flown them themselves and they can recommend them then it's great, it means I have something to choose because otherwise there's all these flight controls to choose and you don't know what there is. Now this happened to coincide quite happily with Banggood asking me if there are a few things I want to review. So I said, yeah, what about a flight controller? A bit like one of these Omnibus F4s. Are you going to focus camera? There it is. Um, so yeah, this is what you get in the bag. Literally the flight controller. Um, and I'm going to go and put it back on that quad and see what happens. The interesting thing about this, aside from it being an F4, so it should be really fast and you can run you know, your maximum um, loop times, is it's got an inbuilt um, OSD, which is handy. I, I always like to have an OSD to mess around with things. And not having to put the additional OSD on is, is really nice. It makes for neat wiring as well because obviously the camera and the um, VTX are going in here too. So let's get it on the quad see how it goes. Okay so having got into the Lyft RC quad my install is probably going to be a little bit different because obviously I've got existing stuff there. So if we just take a look at what we got here on each of the um, ESCs, this is a KISS ESCs, I've got the signal wires so that's pretty easy that just needs to connect in the signal wires for the motors but I've got a lot of stuff here if we zoom in a little bit that we kind of need to rearrange so I've just taken this out of the uh, the heat shrink I put on it this is uh, a, a micro minimum OSD which we don't need anymore so here's the signal wire from the camera that's going to go straight to the um, omnibus board we've also got a 5 volt coming out here which we don't need because we've got uh, an onboard regulator. This is the uh, VCC, uh, i.e. the battery voltage. That's gonna need to come around here to go on, so that needs to be lengthened slightly. And obviously at the moment, this is the VTX. We're getting power for the 12 volt there, which we'll keep. And that's going off to the micro minimum as well, which you don't want. If you look at the board itself, it would orientate around this way, like so. A couple of interesting bits on here I won't be using. It's got a current sensor here, but to do that I need to attach the actual battery lead here to these. That's the positive and ground there, and then go back out via here, which I don't want to do because I've already got this, all this pre-wiring here already. We've also got these are where the camera connections go. So we've got ground, voltage, and um, video in and out. Now, you might want to run your camera and VTX via this. And to do that, there are little jumpers here where you can solder one for 5 volts, solder the other for battery voltage. I'm not going to do either because I've already got 12 volts running the VTX, 5 volts running the camera. I'm literally just going to take the video wire on here because the ground's common all the way through. So there's a bunch of features I'm not going to be using, but that's because I just don't want to rewire really anything, especially the current sensor. I mean, some people find the current sensor quite useful. Um, I don't particularly because I know exactly how long it's going to stay in the air and uh, what the sort of voltage drop is likely to be. But I think it will tidy up all this. I mean, we won't have all this wire here and we'll get rid of some of those. But at the same time, we're going to have to lengthen these wires or maybe resolder onto there to, to sort it out. Anyway, I just thought I'd run through that. I'm going to crack on and solder that. If this was a new install, it might I might have done it completely different. Well, where this is going in to replace something, I'm just going to really take the pass of least resistance and less soldering. So this is um, S bus here and it goes ground 5 volt signal handily of course 5 volts coming through the regulator so I don't need to do anything and then each of uh, these ones is a signal pin for uh, motor 1, 2, 3 and 4 so what are we looking at? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires there, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's that's pretty easy. Seems a lot easier than the existing stuff I had. So yeah, let's crack on and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. I should just mention though that aside from breaking the flight controller, I also broke this entire carbon fibre leg which is split. Currently, this is glued together. This is not a great idea, but Lift RC seems to have uh, fallen off the face of the earth. Their website just shows almost nothing at the moment. So I'm just going to go with this for now and hopefully I'll be able to get a replacement leg. They're pretty easy to swap out. You can swap out the whole leg, um, just take the bits off, put the leg back on, put the bits back on without taking anything else off. So hopefully we'll get one eventually. Well, my original intention here was to show you the after I soldered the bits together on the quad. And uh, here's my original video and I'm putting bits in and stuff. The reason I'm not showing this is because I actually had a failure on this board, unfortunately. After I soldered everything on and checked it was correct, I noticed the voltage regulation to supply five volts to the receiver wasn't working. And checking the board, I found out that this inductor was hanging off. Now, normally, of course, if I'd have ordered this through Banggood or something, I'd have raised an issue with them and said, I've got a faulty board, can you replace it? Because it's a review board and I didn't know if they want to send out a replacement or whatever, I thought I'd have a go at fixing it. So I soldered the inductor back on, but I still couldn't get any voltage regulator from it. So what I did instead, I thought I'll take the five volts from my power distribution board and put that into the five volt rail and supply power that way. And that got me to my first test flight, which is this. You notice I've got some lines on the display there, which I can't quite figure. And I've cut off part of the RSI value on the top right there. Now, this seemed to be going okay, and I was thinking, yeah, this board seems all right. When um, I was going along, and all of a sudden I hit telemetry lost, and the quad just went still and dropped out. What I found I had was a dry solder joint where I'd soldered in the ground cable of my receiver. So that bit was my fault. I went ahead, resoldered that properly, then went back out to the field to try again. This time I met up with Neil. We were doing some flying of some planes and I thought I'd take the 220 round to try and follow his glider. Now if the screen looks fuzzy, as it turned out, that last crash knocked the sensor on the camera, so it is all a bit fuzzy and needs sorting out. Now, this glider chase was going quite nicely. I mean, it looks terrible, but I knew I had the session running as well. And I fixed the RSSI indicator here. And then this happens. Really weird crash, not just a simple case of losing the signal there like last time. I have another look at this, and I still am a bit suspicious of some of the solder joints on the receiver and I make sure I've got solder on both sides of the connector and that's absolutely nothing to worry about. So one thing I did notice in the last video, it came up on the summary page, it talked about the altitude. It turns out that this board has a built-in barometer as well, which I didn't really notice. Not something I'd use, but I thought, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll add it to the OSD. It's easy to do and I'll, I'll just see what it's like. So we're at the field again and we give it a shot and this happens. Uh, as it turns out, one of my motors didn't spin up. So just to explain all the things I did to try and fix the board up, if we look here, these are the um, ground and live cables I bought in from the 5 volt, and these were found to be slightly frayed um, around the join, which I think shorted out the signal pin here. Now, checking out the ESC that was failing, it said it wasn't getting a valid signal from this pin. And when I swapped it around with another one, it was fine. So basically this pin had died potentially as the shorting from this five volt system. So again, my fault, but hey, the voltage regulator didn't work in the first place. So in order to solve that, what I did is actually move the motor wire from motor 2 here over to motor 6, which is here. 
Then I used the Betaflight resource CLI command to remap the motor over, which solved that problem. So after all the crashes and fixes and stuff, here it is finally flying and behaving itself. So we can actually talk a little bit about the flight characteristics of a working board, which is pretty good. This is the board having done absolutely nothing in terms of configuration or PID setting other than setting up my receiver. And you know, it's pretty smooth, isn't it? But again, it's kind of what you expect from any sort of F3, F4 board to just do it. I found that the rates were a little bit sluggish for me out of the box. So on the next flight here, what I did was use the inbuilt OSD to go through and change my rate settings. It took me a little while actually to find where that was. I went into PID settings first off and it wasn't in there. It was pretty obvious when I look back at it actually where it was. But yeah, I just bumped up my rates and had another fly. And this was more my speed, although I have to work out my timings again. You will notice I'm still getting a little bit of noise in the picture. It's not a huge amount, but it, it is something there. So a couple of lines on the display. So I don't know if that's part of the problem of having that failed inductor or something else. It's not too bad, but it is there for sure. So yeah, it certainly flies okay. And it's got an eight kilohertz gyro loop and I'm using a, a two kilohertz PID loop with uh, one shot one two five for these ESCs and everything's pretty smooth as you can see. The, the the difference here between I guess an F3 and an F4 is the amount of CPU used. My old F3 board which didn't have a built-in OSD or a barometer was running at about 15% CPU usage. This with the extra stuff runs at about 4% CPU usage so it's is ridiculously powerful and can just handle anything you throw at it and you can still turn a load on. So the barometer, really quick to react. If you're used to flying an OSD on the sort of GPS based autopilot, that sort of updates every second or so when it gets all you know the pulses from the GPS and goes and updates. This barometer goes crazy, it's uh, updating all the time. I mean is it any use? Not really. I mean on 200 size race quads it's it's a bit of a novelty really I suppose you can say here's my zero meters to 100 meter time to see how much thrust you've got but it's not really something I use but I thought I'd stick it up there anyway the OSD setup is ridiculously simple using the beta flight tool you just decide what you want on your screen you drag the items around and you're good to go just save it and go again very easy to customize to what you want well, despite the problems I had with the board, I would actually recommend the, the Omnibus boards for uh, a race style quad, mainly because it's just so convenient having a built-in OSD. I'm a big fan of MWSD and the, the Micro Minim, but it is extra wiring and extra stuff you have to fit in and it's extra hassle to flash it. Having it built into the board is really, really useful. Um, if you're not doing anything with PIDs, just being able to monitor your voltage and your fly time and stuff like that is really good. Now, this particular one, which is the sort of F4 Pro, has a bunch of features I'm not using, but might be useful to other people. I mean, the barometer is a little bit gimmicky, uh, and I find the current sensor the same sort of thing. But there are people that really find that stuff handy. This has also got an SD slot built in. So if you want to use black box on this, you can absolutely get loads of stats down. And if you've actually tried to pull black box data down off a card which has its own flash data, you'll know how slow that is. So having a separate SD card you can take out and get stuff off is really very handy. Not something I use, but I suppose nice to have. I mean, there are other omnibus boards available on the, the Banggood website. One of which is the basic F4, which doesn't have things like the um, current sensor and SD card, which, you know, might be just easier in terms of wiring and fitting in. There's also, I notice, uh, interesting, uh, DYS are doing an Omnibus F4 Pro, uh, and they've got the power distribution on there as well to go to your ESCs. I mean, it's a single point of failure, but it's quite an interesting board. As far as I can see, though, I don't think the failure rate on these is too high, so 
I got a little bit unlucky. I had a failed one. Yeah, I'd still go ahead and buy another of these omnibus types because the convenience here is really good. And as you see, it flies the quad pretty damn well. I haven't got any particular issues with any sort of jitter or issues at all. Anyway, that's my review of the Omnibus F4 Pro that I got from Banggood. Thanks for them for supplying it. I've obviously put the links down below as per normal, not just to this board, but of the other ones they have as well, because I think they're all quite interesting and uh, should definitely be looked at if you're looking to get a new flight controller for your quad. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.